Hello everyone and welcome to another Beamer Fixer video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to restore the piece of trim around your push button start and headlight switch and buttons on your BMW 5 Series E60. Now it's a really common fault and it's the same material, the same coating that's on the steering wheel at the bottom. Um, if you haven't already, check out my video on how to restore the steering wheel uh, trim. It's going to be the same process on this piece, uh, same paint, so we're going to be using the stove paint which leaves a nice matte finish um, and it's also really hard wearing as well so you don't get repeat of this. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how to remove the trim, how to remove this horrible coating, um, how to paint it again with a stove paint and then how to pop it all back together. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need a trim removal tool. Obviously you don't need something like this, um, you just need the, the thick thick one there you could use a flathead screwdriver but you do risk damaging the the light unit itself um, and the dashboard um, so this on its own I think was about five five pounds six pounds but for 13 it might even be less than that might even been 11 um, you can get this whole set so it's got every conceivable uh, trim tool in there uh, it's even got stereo removal tools and keys at the top there and in there. Uh, some exterior trim uh, panel removers as well. So for the sake of um, the extra five or six pound, I went for a full uh, full kit. Um, but like I say, you only need the thick one really. Okay. So then you will need, once you have your trim off, um, you will need either some masking tape to mask up the buttons or ideally you need... Um, a small um, torque screwdriver, so it's a T10, uh, T10 and a T6. They're quite small, they're in this little electric set. Okay, so ideally um, you'll have one of these. So the screws that hold on the light switch are a T10, um, and the screws that hold on the start button are T6. So it's three in the start button and four behind the headlight switch. Okay, so uh, T6 and T10. Uh, makes life a lot easier and you do get a better finish but if you don't don't panic you can just take them up it just takes a bit more time then we need a secret weapon which is our nail varnish remover to remove the old rubber coating that's on there at the moment that likes to peel uh, to help that we're going to use some toilet paper or you can use kitchen roll as well that's to wrap around the trim when you put this on and it helps keep the nail varnish remover close to the trim itself and helps it peel off as you'll see um, then we need uh, some 1500 sandpaper to give it a good key um, so the paint's got something to bite into. Um, then we'll need some rag and some alcohol rub. Okay, that's just a prep surface to make sure it's dust free. Um, and then we have the paint itself. So again, exactly the same stuff as before. Good old stove and barbecue paint. It's what I used on uh, steering wheel on this and the steering wheel on my E90. It gives a good matte finish and it's strong and durable so you don't get a repeat of uh, what happened before. Uh, to help speed things up, it's not a must, um, but if you have a, a heat gun, it's good. Um, it's good to help draw the coat quick, uh, quicker in between coats. Um, and also, if you're in a cold climate or it's just or you're in the UK and it's cold, you can give the can a quick, um, a quick blow with the heat gun just to help the paint to move around the can a bit more, and you're, it applies a lot easier. Um, and then. Not to get some soapy water as well, that again will help with the sanding and any cleaning you need to do. So that's everything we need, uh, so now what we'll do, we'll crack on and remove the switch. Okay, so first things first, uh, we need to remove the actual um, housing of the switches and the push start button. Um, you don't need to remove the top vent, um, you just need to remove this part. It's actually held in there with uh, four kind of um, clips. Um, so all you do need is your um, trim removal tool, so you can kind of work it in there, ease it out gently. There we go. So that's the four clips, there's two there and then there's two there. And what you need to do now is you just need to remove the electrical connector, uh, connections, so you can just push that tab down and then fold the grey one over, that releases that one. And then the ribbon here, it's just push on the sides and wiggle and it'll come out like that. And there you go, that's the, the unit removed. Okay, so once you have removed your light switches and start button, um, this will be when you can tape them up. Now if you haven't got the T6 or the T10 screwdriver bit, uh, you can just tape the, the button up and the switches 
Um, as long as you take your time, um, use some masking tape, you should still get a half decent finish. Um, but if you do have the T6 and T10 screwdriver bits, uh, then you can remove the switches and button at the back. So the headlight switch and buttons is the T10, and there's one in each corner. So that's one there, 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 and there. So that's the T10. And then the push button start, there's three screws, one at the top, one at the bottom there and one on the other side there and that's the T6. So we're going to take the button and the switch off the back of this and then we're ready to remove the old coating and start get ready to paint. Okay so once you've removed the headlight switch um, and buttons and the push start button you're then ready to um, remove the old rubber coating so we can do this by wrapping uh, the trim in toilet tissue or kitchen roll um, and then we can pop on the uh, nail varnish remover okay so you don't have to go crazy just um, just one or two sheets over the trim that's all you'll need so once you've done that just place it down get your nail varnish remover and start to pour it on there we go so you can see the trim through the the paper there don't worry if you can't uh, I've only gone for a couple of sheets okay so what we'll do we're going to leave this for five minutes we'll check on it then when we did the steering wheel five minutes was more than enough um, so we'll have a look in five minutes time and see how we're getting on okay so that's been five minutes so this is always the fun part we'll peel back the tissue and as you can see it's actually come off in almost one piece there so that's a great result that's what we wanted so what we'll do now is we'll remove uh, the rest of the the old paint um, and then we will um, give it a, a bit of a, a light key with some 1500 grit sandpaper and then we're ready to paint okay so once you have made sure that all the rubber coating has come off um, you may need to repeat the process um, where you wet print tissue and put uh, nail varnish remover on because some of the um, little spaces quite intricate um, and it can uh, be a bit of a pain to get off so just make sure it's all off uh, remember the preparation is uh, is key you want to make sure I think um, is nice and smooth and ready for paint otherwise you'll end up with uh, not such a nice finish so the next thing what we need to do we need to make sure that we give the paint something to eat into so what we're going to do we're just going to have a bit of a rinse and then we're going to go over it with some 1500 grit sandpaper I'm going to key up the surface this is another good opportunity to make sure that um, all the um, old coat is off as well especially in these little gaps so what we'll do is we'll carry on we'll go over everything with the sandpaper and then we will give it a rub down with some alcohol rub and then we'll be ready for paint Okay, so after we've given it a wet and dry, a good rub down, and a double check to make sure there's nothing left on it, um, and it's nice and smooth, we then give it a wash down again with some soapy water, um, and then we gave it a wipe with some alcohol rub uh, to make sure there's no dust uh, or anything left behind. After that, I gave it a quick blast with the heat gun just to make sure there wasn't any residual water hiding in any of the little compartments or anything. We don't want anything dripping down over the new paint and ruining that. Uh, so now we are ready for paint. So as always, uh, preparation is key. Uh, make sure that it is grease free and everything. Um, I'll probably will give it another wipe down now I've touched it with my fingers. Um, but uh, make sure it's all dust free and ready to go. Make sure that you're painting in a dust free area. I know it looks like there's some dust here, but it's not. This is uh, all clean. I have given it a rub down, so there's no dust or anything going to fly up onto the paint. Paint wise, we're going to give the can a good shake. Um, if it's really cold where you are, you can always give it a little um, little. Um, blast with a heat gun, not too much, just enough to keep the, the paint uh, nice and viscous. Um, and then, uh, when it comes to painting itself, you want to go for a couple of coats on this. Uh, the first coat will just be like a light dusting, um, and then we'll uh, we'll build the coats up as we go on. Initially, I'm going to aim for about three coats. Uh, we might need more, um, but that should uh, should do the trick. So 
So I have already given the can a good shake um, and made sure it's nice and warm and ready to go. So another key tip as well is when you go to paint, uh, don't be aiming at it. Um, I've mentioned this in my last video because my very first video of doing something like this, I was starting um, painting whilst aiming at it, a bit of a schoolboy error, and I ended up getting paint that was forming in here, dripped straight onto it. So aim away from the, the trim and then come across it. Okay, so there's our first coat. Now we'll let that dry. Um, if we do struggle with drying time, because it is getting a bit um, a bit more moisture in the air now, it's starting to starting to rain slightly. So um, it may need like a little little blast with a heat gun in between coats just to help them dry. Okay, so that's the first coat on. Um, so we've given it something to build up on now. So what we'll do is we'll carry on, give it a second coat, slightly uh, thicker this time. Uh, make again making sure not to miss any small in intricate areas um, and then we'll go for a third and possibly final coat after that Okay, so I ended up giving it um, four coats, um, just to be sure, three wasn't quite enough, um, four finished off nice. Yours might be slightly different, you may need slightly more, uh, but four did the trick for me. So if I bring it out to the light a bit more, you can see a bit better. Looks a hundred times better. So very impressed with that, great result. Um, just what I expected from that stove paint again, great stuff. So what I'll do now, it's only been sitting about uh, 15 minutes. So I'll let it sit for a bit longer, give it half an hour, give it a little um, help with a heat gun. Um, again, if you do use the heat gun, don't use too much or too close. Literally just um, keep it a good uh, 12 inches away and just give it a light, light little um, blow with it. Um, but yeah, very impressed with that. So we'll let that um, harden a bit more and then we should put the buttons back in and then we are good to go. Okay, so we are now ready to pop our buttons back in. Um, so first of all, what we'll do, we will put the um, headlight switch back in. Uh, so make sure we get it that way and that way. It's a good opportunity as well, whilst the unit's out, just to give it a bit of a wipe down, because um, you don't really get a chance to really get in there. So it's a good opportunity to give those a good clean. Um, so they simply just pop back in like that, pop it over, and then it's the T10, in each of the corners all this would be the time when you would be uh, taking your tape off so what we'll do we'll put the other three back in and then we shall do the start button at the bottom with the uh, t6s and there we go all done all back in looking a million times better uh, so probably worth mentioning that it's probably worth just checking um, before you push it all the way back home uh, make sure that the uh, push, bu push button start still works and the switches and everything all still work uh, which mine does so there we go so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you found it useful I hope you enjoyed doing it on your car um, if you've got any comments please leave a comment I'll get back to everyone as soon as I can and um, please uh, subscribe also again massive thank you to all my subscribers i really do appreciate you guys thank you very much take care bye bye